Hey guys, Obelisk here again with another one of my class overview videos for uh, Dark Age Camelot. Today I'm going to look at the Reaver class on Albion. Uh, talk a little, little bit about um, different specs, um, the abilities that you get and, uh, and the specs, and um, maybe some, some things you want to look for in templates. Um, maybe some uh some re specs some some general strategies about what you can do in, in fights I'll, I'll try to touch on like group play as well as solo play um, i've played my reaver in a bit of both um mostly my reaver is probably small man like, or not small man duo uh, me and a minstrel we did a lot of uh duoing together uh second most is soloing and then i i did a bit of grouping on my reaver too not not a whole lot but uh I, I feel like I came to kind of understand the class from a group scenario at least a few patches ago. A little bit's changed, but not a whole lot. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot of solo and small or duo experience. Um, Drew is like rank 10. Um, rank doesn't really mean much, especially nowadays. You can get ranked so fast, but um, it took me a little while to get Reaver rank 10. It was a little slower back then. Um, not insanely slow, but kind of slow. Um, so I'll go ahead and get into uh, into into game here. Um, got my reaver. My reaver's built right now um, for group. I have a group template on. It's super old template though, so it's completely dated. It's it's terrible. But my my spec uh, most importantly is are the, is a group spec, which I think is the the group spec in my opinion. Um, some people probably um, differ from that, but I really really like this, especially for like the the eight man AV8. Maybe not AV8, but just the the this, this you're running around as a group of eight and maybe not like a, a zerg or like siege for the realm type play style you might want to get something different maybe but for for more uh smaller numbered grouping this is this is my favorite spec by far um, i'm gonna go ahead and just go over all the abilities first and then explain um small man or sorry duo solo specs small man specs um and my group spec and then maybe how the other spec fits into group as well so we're gonna go ahead and get into it and we're gonna we're gonna get into what makes reavers reavers and that's soul rendering so with soul rendering you get two instant life taps an instant dd and an instant scenario i'll go over them individually here so at level 50 you get soul siphon that's your big life tap um, 160 damage 70 percent instant 20 second reuse 1500 range great interrupt great in solo for a little bit of health sustain as well as some some damage as well i like to use this just to spike things down um the second uh life type I, life tap i guess this wrong life taps is let's see which one is this right here soul drain and now this is a um same range 1500 range same recast 20 second reuse um 109 delve so it's quite a bit lower delve than this this one's 60 this one's 109. The uh, the life returns a little bit better. The better one's 70, like the higher delve one's 70%, but the lower delve one is 80%, so it's gonna return more life off the damage. Overall, it's gonna return less damage, but percent-wise, it's gonna be better. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's another great way to spike stuff down, to interrupt stuff, or to get some life back in a fight. Um, now, you also get a instant DD. Um, now this, something that's important to note, both of the life taps are spirit. And, well, actually, well, I'm mistaken, sorry. One of the life taps spirit, one of the life taps is body. And then you have the instant DD, which is cold damage. It's a 120 delve DD. The interesting thing about this one though is a thousand radius. So it's five, or sorry, a thousand range. So it's 500 range shorter than the, the two life taps. Um, the other thing that's different is it's a 15 second reuse. Whereas the other two life taps are 20 seconds. So it's up a little more often. Um, so those are your damaging instant interrupts. Now you also get this instant snare down here. Um, this is actually a, a really strong spell for solo. Can be a little annoying in groups. It's kind of a, uh, a I don't know, it's a double edged sword in groups because it gives root immunity, which a lot of people don't like. but. Just gotta be careful with it. What it is is a fifteen hundred range DD, or sorry, fifteen hundred range instant snare with a twenty second reuse timer. Great for interrupts, but like I said, be mindful. It does give snare immunity. Um, 
what it also does is the duration is super long. It's really obnoxious. Um, it's a minute and 48 seconds long. So pretty much if, if I'm soloing, I'm getting zerged down. I'll pick, I'll pick some caster probably and just throw this on him. And so for a minute, almost two minutes, he's snared out. The group has to keep looping for him every two seconds because he's falling behind. It's just like a, like, it's, it's out of spite because they zerg me down. Or pretty much any time I die, I try to snare someone out. <laughs> but um, so it's a long duration snare. Um, doesn't really have much practicality in the fight because you're probably it's probably going to get broken pretty quickly anyway. Um, but like I said, do be careful. It does give enemy, so be careful about using this on tanks that need to get snared by other things or people that you need to root out. Like if you're pulling um, and you're trying to root out druids, probably don't use this on, on it because then your group can't root it. And they'll be like, who gave it root immunity? What the heck? And you're like, I don't know. It wasn't me, obviously. Idiots. Anyway, um, so this is a change. If, you, if you've played Reavers in the past or you know a little bit about Reavers, this is a big change in the last patch cycle, I guess. This change from a pulsing spell to a instant, sorry, a, uh, a longer duration, just debuff that has a long reuse timer. So the pulse used to be, I don't, I don't know, maybe like eight second duration. This is now 25 seconds in duration. Um, and it's also 30 sec 35 second recast timer. There are some pluses and minuses to it. Mostly in my opinion, at least in solo play, pluses. Because you don't have to continuously twist your, uh, your pulses and run out of power or you not know, have a certain one up that you need up. Um, you can, I mean, there's only five seconds of downtime roughly. I mean, resist play into it. And so is duration if you have duration, but um, so you only have to use this once. So you don't have to continuously twist this to have the effect like you used to with the pulses. So it's kind of a buff, um, but it can be a nerf. Like if you, if you used it on, like say you're fighting a shadow blade, you're fighting along, you use it. And then his friend pops on you a little bit later, maybe 10 seconds later, and didn't get hit by the first hit because he was stealth, you know, 700 units away. Then you have to wait until the recast is up to reapply it. So it's, but it's mostly a buff. Um, the other spell similar, actually, I'm going to go, sorry, just to tell you what it is. It's a 20% um, ABS debuff. So that's really good, P Bay, uh, decent duration. There is a single target. Um, Single target one of this, um, really good. It's a it's pretty much always up. It's just eight second reuse, um, twenty second duration. This is super strong, um, really good. So it's a single target. It does the same thing. It does fifteen percent absorb. If you have the curse set, I'll get into it later. It does a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that's it's pretty strong. It does the same essentially the same thing. A little bit less value if you don't have the curse set, but um, it's just a single target ABS debuff on a low reuse. The other um, PBAOE debuff that used to be a pulse is this damage debuff. So you use this and then the people that get debuffed by it do 21% less melee damage. Pretty dang strong, especially solo when you have people beating on you if they just do less damage. Um, really good. If you're in a group, use it on their tanks as you run by. It debuffs them for 25 seconds. So they do a lot less damage. Good stuff. Um, moving on from there, we have just a self damage ad it is what it is. It lasts 15 minutes. Just throw it up. It's one of your self buffs. In fact, right now it's your only self buff. Um, if you played Reavers in the past, they used to get a self life tapping proc. It had like a 15% chance to proc self buff. Um, that's gone now. So forget about that. Anyway, that's, that's it for soul, um, soul rendering. Um, that's, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good spec line. It's pretty cool. A lot of cool stuff. Actually, sorry, missed one thing. Um, I have the, there we go. I have a PBOE damage pulse. So all the pulses aren't gone. However, this one is the only pulse now. And I need to make a note to say that they're used to, you used to could use the red one and the lower level yellow one. Um, I don't think you still can. I only have the yellow one right now, but I used to have two pulses. I used to have two yellow ones that I could use. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I expect 50 soul rendering, I would only have that one red one. I might be mistaken, but I think you only have one PBOE pulse now, whereas before you had two. You couldn't keep them both up at the same time, but you could use one, and then if you needed to interrupt again within that small radius, you could use another one. So it was really good for like 
erupting around like BGs and just if you had two casters really clumped to like erupt both of them and keep them erupted because you can use use them really like quickly instead of waiting for the pulse to happen again in eight seconds or whatever. Um, so you only get one. It's just a pulsing damage. Sorry, it pulses every five seconds. So it's a pulsing damage. Um, that's that's it. Also, something that doesn't show up in the spec line because I already have it is this circle of despair. Now, what this is is essentially a Bane Lord. It just does a small amount of damage to a 750 radius area. Um, Bane Lords are 750 radius, um, except for Zone of a Man, which is 700, but it doesn't matter. So, this is essentially a Bane Lord um, on a minute and a half reuse. Just in, or, sorry, a minute reuse, one minute. A one minute reuse. So, it's a really strong, just makes Reavers have a lot more interrupts. Um, so yeah, so it's a good spell. Just a little, it does a little bit of damage. Um, Twenty-three damage, whatever. Doesn't matter about the damage. Just know it's an interrupt. Um, you also get a pet scare in Soul Rendering now, which is really cool. Um, so if you have a Chander pet that's stuck to one of your clerics, gone. Pet scare it. It's a uh, five-minute reuse. So. Cool stuff. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, acuity debuff. So this debuffs someone's acuity by 69, pretty decent amount. Also returns a lot of power to your friends within a 500 radius. So if someone needs power or even you need power, you use that, boom, everyone gets power. 30% power, it's a lot. Um, one thing that's this is important for is for people that go 50 soul rendering, these spells cost a lot of power. You can use this every 20 seconds and get 30% power. It helps keep your power sustain up. Um, so that's really good. Um, now on to the second Reaver, um, defining spec line. So Reavers are one of only two classes to get flexible. Um, Heretics got it. Um, so that's, that's the only classes that have flex. Used to be only Reavers until Heretics came out. They stole it. Were Heretics and Reavers out at the same time? I thought not. Reavers were SI. Heretics were Darkness Rising, maybe? Anyway, so Reaver's Hat were the only ones with it for a while. Anyway, not that that matters at all. Also, their flex specs are a little different, if I'm not mistaken. I think Heretics are still like the two-part levy chain and have the Cobra live tap. Doesn't matter, but we're covering Reavers. Um, anyway, so as a Reaver, you're probably only going flexible. I don't know if there's very many slash thrust or crush Reaver, so I'm not even gonna think about those spec lines. Um, this is gonna be your, your weapon line. Um, so I'm just gonna start at the, the good spells, especially for groups and stuff, and I'll go into a few for solo. Probably the, the most, your main style for damage, and probably the most iconic Reaver style is Leviathan. What it does is a back style, um, high damage, Although Reavers don't really do a ton with their whip anymore. Um, not that they really ever did, but they do even less, I feel like, now than a few patches ago. So they do, it does high damage, but it also has a 113 DD proc on it. Now, if you played Reavers like 10 years ago, maybe even longer than that, I don't know. Leviathan used to be, I think, 153. So the damage on Leviathan used to be a lot stronger. But we'll hit him a few times. So. As you can see here, my whip does about 213 damage, 193 on that second hit, and then 215 from the proc. Now I want to show you something because this is important for templates and weapon selection, things like that. Something procced while I was hitting, it was my whip. It gives me a 10% flexible um, weapon skill buff. The, the DD um, portion of Le Leviathan has no... Um, Variant, sorry, it has no variance. So it's always gonna hit for 215 unless you get a debuff or you get more weapon skill. I have 10% more weapon skill now. So boom, my my uh, my Leviathan proc hits for 20 damage more, which is roughly 10% of uh, 215. It's not exactly um, 10%, it's a little less. I don't know how the math works on that, but it gives me a small damage boost to my Leviathan proc. And also, It'll, it'll up my whip damage a little bit, my actual melee damage also. But so the weapon skill weapon's really important. I'll get to that later. Anyway, so that's that's the big thing is Leviathan, who we hit hard with Reavers. Spoiler alert, you really don't hit that hard, especially in groups. Solo, yeah, they, they can kill stuff pretty quickly, but 
let's see, my cleric just put up resist. Um, the red resist, which pretty much everyone's probably going to have. Now I have 55% spirit on cleric, which is what you're going to be hitting most of the time. And boom, now my damage is way more just lackluster. Instead of hitting for 215, I'm hitting for 150 with the Leviathan proc, and then my weapon damage is roughly the same. Um, so there's that. Anyway, um, next style that's important is this um, Taipan. I don't know how to spell it, or how to say it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if you want to. It's your side style. Now what this does is, I forget what's bound, bound right there. It's a good style all around. It's a uh, high damage style. Sorry, I'm like lagging out here. Shouldn't affect the video, but there we go. We're back. It's a high damage style and it snares. A 23 second side snare. 23 seconds is a long snare. If I don't get blocked. I think I'm lagging again. Yep. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, it's a 23 second snare. So that's nice. The follow up style to it is really good. And by really good, I mean it's okay. Um, I can't, there we go. I knew this was going to happen eventually. I've been having a lot of internet issues lately. Um, so I'll kind of lag out for a little while. I might not, might not LD, but, um, ended up LDing this time, but I'll just, I'll just talk through some of the, the styles and some of the concepts of Reaver because I don't want to remake this whole video. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really want to spend time to edit it to get this out. Okay. So the tie pins, let's pull it back up to webcam. So the Taipan, Taipan, whatever, style, it's a side snare, as, we, as, we've, as I said probably 20 times already. And the follow-up is a style called Cobra. Now, Cobra is a 130 delve DD. So it's a little bit more than Leviathan. Leviathan's 113, 115, 113. Leviathan's a 113 delve DD. Cobra is um, 130, 130. So it's a harder hitting. So if you get your side style off and you don't want to leave him snared, you want to do some damage, hit him with Cobra. Boom, great. Um, the the next style we're going to talk about is a, is your anytime style. It's going to be called Constrictor. It's at level 34. I'll, uh, one second, log back in, I'll show you. But um, what it does is it probably has medium damage going off the top of my head. And it's a it has a DD proc on it. And I think the DD is 45. So it's, it's relatively low, but... It's better than nothing. It still hits relatively hard. In the past, the growth rate on that style was insane. Now it's nerfed. Um, so before, Reavers were hitting really hard with their whip, like the actual physical part of it. And um, that's just nerfed now, unfortunately. Especially on that anytime style. It's kind of dumb. I wasn't really... I, I, I was a fan because I used it, but it was kind of boring. Um, Anyway, so Constrictor, your anytime style, anytime style with a small DD proc on it. Um, now we are back in game. So let me pull that back up. Yeah, boom. Okay. So yeah. Constrictor, 45 spirit damage. I was right. Um, high endurance, medium damage. Um, your next style that's important, at least for groups and probably a little bit for solo, you have another back style. This has a 19 second snare on it. Um, so if you need to peel someone, um, boom slang level uh was it level 21 it's a style for you um other than that this indigo snake if you need some like quick help really bad to use this i guess but it's such a small dd damage it's not really gonna give you much help it's probably not worth using don't worry about it. um for solo a strong style is tiger snake there we go tiger snake it's your after parry style um 22 percent attack speed reduction um and it lasts for 20 seconds pretty strong in my opinion um now that gets followed up into an anaconda anaconda is an eight second stun um which is a, a very long stun so this is a good if you want a duration stun and you can get this off go for it um so that's um tiger snake into anaconda your parry chain now let's see what's your block King Snake, okay. I use King Snake when I can because it has a bleed on it. Bleeds are important in solo play at least because they stop health regen, um, like your uh, greater health mist or whatever has health regen on it. Um, it just stops that. So use bleeds when you can for solo. Really nice stuff. Um, other than that, I think that's probably 
also okay so you get a, a blockchain also another blockchain viper just an after block style high damage i guess use it um king snake has high damage too i don't know the exact growth rates on them but and viper chains into a style called copperhead it's a five second stun off your it's all right um you'll probably if you want to stun after you block use one of your shield styles now it's going to shield um the most you'll ever go is 40 41 sorry 42 shield you're not going to go for mangle level 50 shield style so i'm not even going to talk about it. um now this is why i am for groups for solo you probably won't have 42 shield but anyway for groups you get slam anytime five second stun um on reaver I, I i actually peel more than you think i have two i have a back snare i have a side snare i have a something called pin i'll talk to you about in a second but slam is like a, the five second slam is super good for peeling because it gives a lower immunity time the immunity timer on a uh, five second slam is 25 seconds the immunity timer that they get from a nine second slam is 45 seconds so you you can slam more times with a, a lower duration slam for peels which is good so you slam, snare, run off. 25 seconds, you can come back, slam, snare, run off. Okay, um, if you need a duration slam, you have mangle, eight second side, uh, side stun. Go for that. Um, paralyze is okay. It's a back style, six seconds. I'd probably just use slam. It's a one second difference. Who cares? Um, and pin. Pin is unique to Reavers on Albion. Champs, Valkyries, Reavers get pin. Pin, super strong. Just ridiculously strong. Um, let me, let me do my bot. Sorry, type in real quick. If I can, there we go. Um, anyway, so what pen does is an anytime style. I can use it from any angle, whatever, who cares? What it does is applies a 70% slow, but I think that diminishes as the duration gets lower. The big thing is that slow or snare or whatever has no immunity, obviously. If the target has root immunity, you can still pin it. Unlike any other melee snare, you can still pin it and slow it with the style. If this target had root immunity, I couldn't side snare it, couldn't back snare it with my Taipan and Boom Slaying. Those are normal melee snares. They just don't apply. Also, targets that are pinned and take damage, the damage doesn't break. So let's let's test this. I'm just gonna run my bot. Let me let me get to the side of the room real quick. I'm gonna run my bot back the other way, and I'm gonna pin it, and then I'm gonna levy it. So boom! All right, target's pinned, levied, but still snared, still snared. All right, the pin's coming out. Now I'm gonna repin it. Boom! Snared. Now levied. Now let me show you the difference between that and a melee snare just to show you the unbreakable portion of it. So I'm going to back snare it. Now I'm going to levy it. Now, boom, it's running full speed. Back snare, and then a, a non-snare style allows it to go full speed. If that style was pin, pin, normal styled, still snared. The, the pin only lasts for a few uh, swings, but it's super strong. Um, you're going to want to use this on pretty much everything, in my opinion. If, if you run up to a caster, if you're not stunning it, the first style you should hit it with, even if you're just running to erupt it, it's pin. Um, even if you're going to stay on it for a few swings, pin. Because what will happen is you pin it, and you just levy it, side style it, any time style, whatever you need to do, but it's snared. It can't really get away from you. And you can keep it permanently pinned. So the, the thing is, what I like to do, let's see. All right, running the cleric. We got boom, pin, levy. Levy, keep in mind I have no haste celerity, pin. So I'd be attacking a lot faster. But anyway, so pin, levy, levy, pin. Keeps it pretty much permanently pinned, especially if I had haste and celerity, whatever. Um, so yeah, pin. Style, style, pin. Style, style, pin. That's what I do. That's really good in my opinion. Um, for tanks, if you're if you're needing to long term snare them, just hit them with a side or back snare. If you're running up to a tank that you know is stun immune and you're not going to get side or back, just hit pin, and then you can probably maneuver a little bit easier to hit their side or back with a, a longer duration snare. 
super important. Um, tanks have been reared, pin them. That's the only way you can peel them, really. Well, not the only way, but like that's the, one of the easiest ways to pin them. Or sorry, to, to peel them is to pin a, a snare immune target. Super good. Even solo, like if you were to go the spec for solo, which I don't think you should, I'll explain that in a second. You can pin and kite if you need to. It's just it's strong. Like pins so good, you should you should get it, especially in groups. I don't see a lot of reavers going forty two or forty one shield. You, you you need pin. You need slam. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and get right now into the, uh, the spec difference for for my group spec and other group specs real quick, just to kind of argue my spec points uh, points a little bit better. Um, the reason slam is so strong is because if you're in there, like you're on some druid caster, and their little hero runs up to you and is like, "What's up, dude? I'm here to pin you," or sorry, here to peel, peel you. Sorry, pin peel. And you're like, oh no, if you don't have slam and you have, say you're 50 soul rendering, 50 um, whip, and then you can't get 29 shield with Reaver. You can't get paralyzed, which is kind of weird, kind of kind of crappy. So all you have is um, disable, which is this little, this little side stun, four seconds. And sorry, you can't get paralyzed, you can't get bashed, my mistake. So you have disable and paralyze. So you, you have no anytime stun. So he walks up to you to win the peel battle. All he's got to do is slam you, peel you, and then he's off. If you're on some druid and hitting it, sorry, I just smacked my mic. You see him coming, you have slam. You have a chance to peel him before he peels you. So you, you see him coming, you face him. You try to run through slam him, or you just try to slam him face on. Whoever wins that slam wins. If you don't have slam, you have to side or back snare him or side or back stun him. Huge disadvantage. All he has to do is hit you with an anytime style. So you lose appeal war almost immediately if you don't have slam, um, which is important, especially if you're trying to play defensive on Reaver, which is better than a lot of people think. A lot of people think, oh, Reaver's only offensive only. It's one of the better peelers in the game, in my opinion. Um, if you don't have slam, you're kind of eh, as a peeler, um, especially if the person you're trying to peel has slam for the reasons I mentioned before. Also, I love the spec for pen. I just went off about pen for an hour, so refer to that. The reason I don't think it's that bad to drop your soul rendering in this spec. A lot of people go 50 soul rendering, which I don't think is bad, but I think the trade-off for shield is way better in groups, not in solo. But you all, like primarily what you use your soul rendering spells for is interrupts or art interrupts. So having the red version of this isn't huge in, in groups because you're not really using it for damage or life sustain. You're using it just to rub some dude. Same with this one, same with this one. And then the instant snare, it being a longer duration doesn't really matter. This is already a minute, 30 seconds. It's not going to last that long anyway. So these three, or, sorry, these three, four spells in groups are used for rups in my opinion. Sometimes you can kind of spike someone down. Like if you have all three of these up, all three of these damages up and you use them all at once with the levy, it does do some damage, but you mostly use them for rups. I don't think it's worth investing your points from shield into that just for a little bit more spike damage. Um, now, these debuffs are a little bit better if you have uh, more spec into them, but not by a whole lot. Not worth it. Slam and pin are so strong. And mangle, you get an eight-second side stun if you uh, don't go 50 soul rendering. So if you need a long-duration stun like a caster so you can do a lot of damage to it, you have mangle. Um, so I don't mind giving up a little bit of value and damage in these to get slam and pin and mingle and, and more defense. So like if someone slam tries to peel you or slam you, you can block them more. That's also important in groups. That a lot of people don't think about is actually your defense. Um, now for solo, I'm going to, I'm going to argue why I think 50 soul reaver, sorry, 50 soul rendering is a lot better than getting slam. And for that matter, getting mangle and bash. Um, I'll try. I'll, I'll probably link my reaver. I, I have. I've made two solo reaver reviews. One with a, a patch that's similar to this. One uh, well before it. Um, but when I was soloing on the um, fifty soul rendering fifty flex reaver, I think I only had like twenty seven shield or twenty eight shield. You can't get twenty nine shield. You don't have the spec points for it. So you lose out on your seven second stun bash, which is an after block shield style, which that hurts to lose out on because that's a pretty easy stun to get off in solo. You, you block a lot. 
and it's a seven second stun. That's a pretty long stun. With 50 soul rending, 50 flex, you don't get that. All you have are paralyzed, disable, and a stun called incapacitate, which is a five second after block stun. Disable is a side stun, four seconds. Ugh. Paralyze is a six second back stun. Not bad, it's all right. But your after block stun is only five seconds instead of seven seconds. But you're not able to get that by going 50 soul rendering. Now, why I think you need 50 soul rendering as a solo reaver. At that point, these live taps, these two instant live taps, become wildly important. That's because this is a large part of your health sustain as a reaver. So you're able to, your, your ability to self-sustain in solo is super important because you're, you don't have a cleric and fryer spam healing you. You got to do it yourself. So you need these. And they, they do a bit of damage. You're using these for damage and sustain in solo. Not just rups where you don't care about the damage. So you get more damage out of this, you get more damage out of this, and you get more damage out of this. Your three instant damaging abilities and your life taps. You get more life tap value and more health return. You also, I, I think these debuffs are a lot more important solo than they are in group. Um, that's my opinion. Um, but you get better values of these. Like this, you get 8% more on this. Sorry, not 8%. I'm, out of this world you get three percent more percent on this uh melee damage debuff which is nice your your absorb debuff your abs debuff becomes a little bit better um so those are the big things i that's why i think it's worth the the stun trade-offs is you get more you get more one damage and you get more health sustain quite a bit more too if you look at the delves so soul siphon is level 50 so you gotta go level 50 for this the the ability right below that is, let's see. If you go my spec that I am, you get a really low one, which is only 104 damage versus 160. But if you go something like, let's see. Um, you get one right here. If you go like 42 soul rendering, you get this 130 versus 160. So that's not too bad. But you lose out on this 45 one. I think there's probably a weird spec you can go where you can get like, I don't know if you can go 45 soul, um, 35 shield, and 50 flex. You might can. Let me check on that real quick because that might be a good spec. Sorry, just bear with me for a moment. I know this video is getting a little long, but I want to make sure I cover most important things. Let's see, 50 flex. Sorry, I'm on a... Uh, let's just see if I can add... Whatever, I'll just... I'll just tell you i'm not gonna share a screen because i can't figure it out anyway let's go 45 uh soul rending there it is 45 50 flex how much shield can we get okay so a, another good solo spec might be if you want longer stuns is you're i, I can't show this to you but you can uh you can write down your little notepad but <laughs> is to go 50 flexible for Leviathan, 35 shield for Mangle and Bash. So you get an eight second side stun and a seven second after block. And then you can go 45 soul rendering. I can show you what 45 soul rendering does. So what that does is it gives you the highest level version of this instant life tap, a 109 delve 80% return life tap, um, which is, that's the best you're getting out of that one. And it gives you the second best of this one. So you lose, if you remember, that the, the level 50 life tap was um, 160 delve. So you lose 27 delve on that. So it's it's not super bad. And you, I think you get a lot by getting more shield. Um, what you do lose is some of your ABS debuff, which goes from, what is it, 15 base. Let's see, 20 for your PBA one to what is this so you lose five percent on your uh your pbae one and then your single target one goes from 15 or if you have the uh, curse set 22 to down here 13 to 18 so it's not a huge difference you lose two percent and um four percent if you have this set so that's not too bad 
So I'd probably go to the spec. You lose a little bit of damage on this too. It goes down um, quite a bit actually. Yeah, all you get is a blue one, which is 95 delve versus 120 delve. So it's a little bit of a trade off, but I think that's a, you have options. You go 50 solid rendering, 50 flex, and like 27, 28 shield. You miss out on bash and mingle, or you go 45 soul rendering, 35 shield, 50 flex. You get bash and mingle, your side stun and your after block stun that are long duration, and you lose a bit of your damage and life return and some of your debuffs. So it's trade off, it's your choice. Anyway, um, template stuff. Um, so the curse set gives you better ABS a better single target ABS debuff. It takes this one from 13 to 18%, and it takes the, the higher level one, if you go higher soul rendering, to um, from eight, sorry, from 15 to 22%. So I don't think the curse stuff is entirely worth it, in my opinion. Um, maybe for your grouping, but probably not solo. If you can fit it, fine, but if not, whatever. Um, for solo, you're gonna wanna have some sort of heal over time chest, whether it be cursed, your curse set chest piece, which has one, or the Aureolite chest piece, which has one, or timeless indigo mail. Um, whatever is easiest for you to fit in your template, um, do that. Uh, let's see. Let's let's actually see what the uh, the Reaver cloak does. I think I have one, or maybe not. Who knows? Uh, there we go. The Reaver cloak, which I did not delve. There we go. So. The Reaver Cloak's probably not bad in groups. So it gives you the 40% um, magic resist secondary charge, which is similar to the Astral Cloak of Heroes. So in groups, you need that because you're flying in, you might get nuked down. You're going to want to have this magic charge up, either your, your Loyal Cloak charge or your um, Astral Cloak charge that gives you a lot of resist. So template one of those for groups. For solo... Like I said, the heal over time stuff, maybe the otherworldly um, cloak that gives you the SOM style um, charge is probably gonna be good. If you can fit it, Reavers are probably gonna be hard to template because you have to template in melee stats and magic stats. You gotta have your resist pierce, your spell damage, and you gotta have all your melee stuff, um, obviously. And you probably need to template some acuity for solo at least. Um, I did some math years ago. I don't know if it's still accurate, but a point of acuity essentially roughly rounded out to about a point of damage on your life tap. So if you had 20 more acuity, you did 20 more damage. I don't know if that's it's right still. It might have been like 0.8 damage per acuity point, but your acuity gives you more damage. Um, for solo, I haven't played my Reaver since I had this acuity debuff slash power heal, but I always templated in for solo, Infernals. So if you have the high level spells, I think the Infernals are pretty nice. Um, I don't know if they're still necessary with this power acuity debuff thing. So you might have enough power sustained from that. Um, I'm a big fan of those Cursed Blood Gauntlets on pretty much any class. They're a 25% heal. It's instant, usable in combat, just an item charge. Um, on Reaver, it'll probably heal you from around for around 700 damage. Um, so that's good. Um, also, I'd go for a melee charge, especially for solo. I think melee charges are really nice. Maybe even a magic charge for people using legendary weapons. In groups, you definitely need a magic charge. For example, um, let's see. Bracer of Arcane Vigor. Vigor. <laughs> That's actually the melee one, sorry. Um, Bracer of Arcane Commands. This 10% uh, all magic resists little secondary charge. Use that, super good in groups. Um, I'd probably have both in a solo temp if I could fit them, at least the melee charge in solo though. Um, other than that, I think you're pretty much open um, on what you can fit in there. Your shield for solo, probably something like the uh, like the DF shield, which I think has like the, that has the offensive celerity proc, I think, and then the defensive heal proc, or no, it has a defensive out of proc, or like a heal proc shield. Those are good. Um, whips. So on my Reaver solo, I always ran Celerity charges. I, I leveled up Alchemy. All you need is 886 Alchemy to recharge Celerity charges. Like I have one on these uh, these low level gloves, 10% Celerity. You can use Celerity potions too, but those are kind of expensive. Um, if you're using those, you can use a slower whip. I use 
the uh, the Darkness Falls whip three point or sorry four point three speed. They have the weapon skill proc on them. That ten percent weapon skill buff is really good because, like I said, I showed you earlier, it increases your levy damage, your proc damage, as well as your melee damage. Um, after those proc, a lot of the times I'll swap to a spirit legendary weapon because that debuffs for one my weapon damage, which I'm using spirit. Two my proc damage on levy and constrictor and cobra if I hit that. So it. So if I get my weapon skill proc and then I swap to spirit weapon and get a spirit weapon proc, I'm hitting pretty hard. And keep in mind the weapon skill proc on this hollowed whip or this uh, dark flame whip, which is a DF whip, lasts for a minute. So it lasts a pretty long time. Um, if you get dex quick debuffed, haste debuffed, attack speed debuffed, um, you're probably going to be swinging pretty slow. At that point, I'd look at using a different whip. Um, I don't know if I have any on me. I don't know why, but I don't have any on me. Um, was it Dark Knight's Fury, Dragon Knight's Fury? It's whatever the the old Dragon Drop one is. It's a whip. It has a weapon skill buff on it, which is nice, but it's three point zero speed. So look at having that in case you get debuffed, your attack speed debuffed pretty bad. I think there's also a three point zero speed whip. Pretty sure. Don't think I have any on me, but. So carry those around too. Swap to those if um, you get attack speed, dex quick, hasty buff to hell. You're going to want to be swinging a little bit quicker because especially if you're leviathan people because that's a lot of damage you're losing if you're attacking slowly. Um, other than that, I think that's about it for template. RAs, um, I know this is a long winded video. Sorry again um, if you made it through this far. But um, for groups, I'm going to go ahead and start with group. Here are my group RAs. Um, I'm ranked 10, so you might not be able to get all these. Charge 5, really important. You might can drop to charge 4. Um, but I like to be able to charge multiple times in a fight. A lot of times fights will last over a minute and a half, so I'll have a few charges in a fight. I think that's pretty important. Um, but like I said, if you can't get it, charge 4, it's like a 2.5 minute reuse. Even charge 3 if you have to, a 5 minute reuse. That gives you a charge in a fight. Um, like I said, I like charge five though, if I can get it, um, perch, you don't have stoicism. Um, you, you can get that, but you don't have stoicism. So you still kind of need to, uh, have other ways of getting SCC. A mez will still last 20 seconds or so on you. Root will last about the same. Um, stuns still last like three or four seconds for casters. Melee stuns also are a pain. So I like perch three, um, gives you a nice 10 minute reuse instant perch, uh, for groups. Debt nine is a must in my opinion. I'd get, it's hard to, when you're, when you're low rank on Reaver, it's very hard, but that's super important because if you get rooted and no purge down, you're out for, you know, if you have like zero purge, you're out for about a minute. So you're pretty worthless. Um, and then after that, I always like Master of Mage, or sorry, Avoidance of Magic. If you're fighting caster oriented groups, if you're fighting groups that have a bunch of tanks, you don't need that AOM. But if you find yourself fighting groups that have a lot of casters in them, you're gonna be the target a lot because you're probably pushing in trying to erupt and stuff. So you'll be the easiest target to nuke. You don't have a lot of hit points on Reaver. You're gonna need some some help. So AOM's pretty nice. And that's why I also recommend getting one of those magic charge rings or bracers or whatever, because you need all the mitigation you can get. And then after that, I mean, I'm at rank 10, that's all I have besides Mastery Pain 2. But after that, if you're crazy or you wanna drop some points into something, uh, Master of Pain, Master of Majory, probably pretty good. Um, TWF for groups, maybe TWF1. I wouldn't go much higher than that. It's okay. It's situational. It's kind of a niche thing. Other than that, you don't really have a lot of stuff you need for groups. You're kind of, you kind of got to get these, in my opinion. You can drop AOM if you're not fighting casters. But other than that, these are kind of, these three right here are kind of must-haves for me. Then you can kind of play around with TWFs and some damage or AOM or whatever you want. Now for solo, completely different, obviously. Um, you're going to want to get whatever level of purge you're comfortable with. Um, I like purge 3 or purge 4. Solo, I didn't go charge 5. Because obviously, solo fights didn't last over a minute and a half, usually. And uh, and those type of fights, I probably didn't need multiple charges. Maybe I did, I don't know. But those fights are probably just sustained shields beating on each other, whatever. Um, I went per charge 4, I think. You can go with charge 3, but... It's a lot for fighting casters or things are trying to kite you or stuff like that to close that distance. 
I think you still want some charge, but you don't need charge five. Charge three or four is probably good. At my rank, I probably like charge four. After that, twiff one or twiff two. I like. I think I normally ran twiff one, but twiff two is okay. It lasts longer. But I think twiff one does what I want it to do. And here's what I want twiff to do. When I'm fighting, like say two rangers pop on me or a nightshade and a ranger or two nightshades or something, I drop a twiff. People see twiff. They don't know right off the bat if it's a twiff five and doing 150, 200 damage a tick or a twiff one and doing negligible damage. They don't know. They don't have that luxury of like, especially if a lot of stuff's happening in the fight, you're hitting them, they're hitting you. They can't look at their chat logs really quick. They don't know how much they're getting hit for. The, the thing that happens when you twiff on people is they panic. So they'll just run away. Or they'll burn something. They'll burn like a phase shift or something they don't need to at that point. So it freaks people out and lets you have an advantage to either backstyle them when they're running or blow an ability they don't need. And also, it's really good for rupting. So if you, you, you have an archer shooting you and he's in twiff range, throw a ground target near him or on him and twiff. When you twiff, it's not just a one-time one rupt. He has to literally run out of the twiff. And he's snared while he's running out of the twiff. What's the twiff snare? Um didn't say but twiff obviously snares you while it damages you so if he wants to continue shooting you or casting on you or whatever it is he's got to then run out of that twiff which takes time especially when he's snared and then he's still got the like two second rep timer after he gets out of the twiff so it's a long interrupt even twiff one does that you don't need high level twiff um if you want high twiff you can get it for the damage it's fine um i just never really ran high twiff i just used it for the fear factor the uh, oh no twiff um so I at least get twiff one just for the people will freak out. I, I I guarantee you that people just kind of lose their shit when they see a twiff on them. Um, solo. So after that, um, I think IP. I usually ran IP two. I had a heal bonus template, so that helped me a little bit. Um, so if you can fit some heal bonus in your solo temp, it's all well and good. If not, IP two, IP three, whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with, this preference. Um, I always got a little bit of mastery focus just to make sure my life taps landed. And if you're running the not level 50 life tap, um, some of your spells are kind of low, even with that spec. Like your second life tap's level 45, so probably mastery of focus one at least. It's a good idea for solo or for groups if you want to make sure your spells land. I don't really care in groups. Um, after that, mastery of blocking, mastery of parry are super important. Um, the big thing about Reavers is you always have your shield out. You're always block. You're blocking a ton. You're parrying a ton. You want to make sure, like that's the biggest thing about Reavers is they just have so much defense and sustain, and then decent damage when they get you stunned. So to be able to just up your defensive stats, super invaluable. They're one of the only classes that keeps their shield out all the time. Like one of the only classes that spec shield that keeps their shield out all the time. Like paladins, armsmen, things like that. They just use it to slam. You don't see a lot of sword shield paladins, you know. Um, you know, champs, you don't really see sword shield champs, heroes, things like that. They always pull out their spear. They might pull out a shield every now and then, but Reavers 100% of the time have the shield out. So you want, you know, I usually ran like blocking five, blocking six, parry five, parry six. Both are good. Um, you have a good parry chain, so having more parry is good. Um, you're probably specking a little less parry, so getting that up is nice. If you're solo, you can play around with your spec two a little bit, depending on what spec you go, and get a little bit higher parry. Um, it's up to you. Um... For solo, other than that, you can just go some damage arrays, master your majory. Um, wild power will allow your life taps and stuff to crit. I don't think it's as worth it as master majory. Master majory will affect your weapon procs. It will affect your levies and your constrictors. Um, master your pain is never a bad shout. Um, so yeah, you're a little flexible there, but you do need some charge. I'd get twiff one, some IP, some blocking and parry, and then whatever the heck you want to do. Um, that's the solo spec. Um, I already explained the spec lines, why I think they're better, um, the groups at least, so that kind of give you some strategy. Um, I'll give you a little more. So I like to charge in uh, if I'm playing offensive at some point. Um, throw some Bane Lords out if I need to, and single target instant interrupt. While I'm on one target, if I'm, say I'm trying to kill an enchanter right here, and this little sister Elaine healer is about to cast a heal on her, I'll quickly swap hit my life tap button to instant interrupt them and then swap back to this chander and start nuking them. That'll erupt him for about three, four seconds. When that erupt timer is about gone, I'll swap to him again, hit him with another life tap, continue hitting my dude, and then hit him again at some point. You can you can erupt while you're attacking or you can just 
you see two casters, maybe this, uh, this little smith right here and the healer are both casters. I'm flying in hitting this other caster right here. I erupt him, switch targets, erupt him with something else, and then go back to erupting this. So use your erupts, use your instances as erupts. They're really good. Reavers can throw out so many erupts. You have four abilities, three of them are on 1500 ranges on 20 second, 15 second reuse timers. You're a erupt machine, man. Use your erupts. Also, you have Bane Lords, and then you have the Reaver Bane Lords. So you essentially have four Bane Lords that you can use. Um, so throw those out. This little pulsing thing is really good too. Say I, I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to the Smith right here, and I'm, I'm coming in from here. My my cleric, he's a caster. I'm running by him. I hit him with that erupt while I'm going, and then boom, I I killed him or I erupt my Smith, and then. I decided I need to go to this guy. This guy's still sitting here because I don't know why. I'm erupting this guy. Smith gets hit with my P-Bay, keeps him erupted. Or say, for example, this guard, or guardsman is guarding my cleric. He's bodyguarding him. And I'm like, oh no, I can't erupt you because I'm staying here for an hour because you're BG'd. I can't actually attack you. I can just turn that on and then do whatever, erupting through BG. So this this little pulsing thing is a really good spell. Be careful with it. It does break CC. So I wouldn't leave it on unless you know you're using it to erupt or and you know CC is not coming. Um, but as soon as you see like CC in your area, turn it off real quick. Just click it again, cancel it. It's gone. So be careful with it, but it's super potent erupt. Um, so you have your four instant erupts, your little pulsing thing. It's close range. And then your rear vein lord and then your real vein lords. And then any caster you get on, acuity QED debuff. Or if you need power, use your QED debuff. Um, pretty strong. Use your ABS debuff on any target you're on. Your single target one at least. It's a seven second reuse, eight second reuse, sorry. So it should be up pretty much all the time. Just use it, levy harder, woohoo. Um, pet scare, obviously. Now, Reaver Bomb, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Okay, so I know this video is getting super long, guys, but bear with me. If you really wanna know Reavers, You've you stuck around. You probably know a decent amount. Um, so your Reaver Bomb. Here's pretty much the gist of it. Um, Agony Transmission is the big one. What this does is it takes you down to, what is it? Um, it takes a lot of your health. It's a ton, like 70% or something. You got to be careful with it. But you hit your Agony Transmission. It, it does like 30, 40% damage to them. It does a lot of damage. And it pretty much kills you, so be careful. You use that. Then you use Primal Agony, which does another 10% or so of their current health. So it's another little bit of damage. And then you hit your rank 5. And I forgot to mention this earlier. Your rank 5 is a PBOE, 350 radius, life tap with 80% health return for 200 damage. This is super strong if you're around a lot of people because it heals you a lot. It's a little bit nerfed from what it used to be, but... It's still, you can still blow something up with a Reaver. You just gotta be careful. So the Reaver bomb is to, and I shouldn't have used my Bane Lords earlier. I can show you now, but what you wanna do is you wanna hit Agony Transmission, then immediately hit Primal Agony, and then immediately last hit Soul Quench in rank five. And then you can, if you want to use like your little Bane Lord ability that you have, you can use that or you can save it for Rups. You can actually, if you want to, save Primal Agony. All you really need is Agony Transmission and Soul Quench. Um, you can throw in some extra stuff just for a little bit more damage, but it's not the big damage. But Agony Transmission takes a lot of their help, takes more of your help, and then your Life Tap PBOE. And that's going to hit really hard. Um, you got to be careful using it, especially if you're using it on one person because you're only hitting one person with that Life Tap. It's a little bit better if you have these two life taps up too, but you don't have to. Um, it hits really hard. Um, the cool thing is it hits pets, the life tap. So the more it's in that 350 radius, the better you are because you'll get healed really, really, really high up. Um, for example, um, if you're fighting two hunters, for example, they both have their pets up and they're both in melee range. They're both beating on you. Or two vamps that have pets, for example, they're they're just wailing on you. You hit your primal agony and your 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 soul quench. You're doing a ton of damage to everyone involved, both vamps and their pets, and you're healing off the vamp one, vamp two, vamp pet one, and vamp pet two. So that's you're healing off four targets 
So you're going to spike up in, in health. Um, so whatever you lost with, uh, with um, agony transmission, you're gonna gain back probably with your rank five and probably a little bit more. I like to use Reaver Bomb, at least when I'm solo, when I'm already super low, like I'm about to die, I'm gonna bomb. So the agony transmission is not really gonna do much and I'm just gonna get the, the heal from Soul Quench. And I'm always trying to hit at least two people. Um, if I'm just doing a one person, I might just Soul Quench unless I'm super low and then I'll agony transmission because it doesn't matter at that point, I'm not losing much health. So that's just a tip for Reaver Bomb. Um, you see people like Calorian or like TVR's old groups with uh, Trick or whatever those those dudes were. They ran like four or five Reavers and like insta-killed Zergs. Um, if you have like five Reavers, you pretty much, and you bomb something, they all die. <laughs> pretty much everything dies. But um, anyway, that's mostly it for Reavers. Um, I think I got through everything. Um, took me long enough, but if he, I missed something, I'm sure. Um, there's just, there's a lot going on with Reavers. Um, so many spec options for group and solo, RA, skill, whatever. There's a lot of options, so many template options, but you gotta kinda hit a lot of high points. You gotta have your magic damage in there because that's gonna do a lot. Um, if I missed anything, let me know in the comments. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up or whatever, I don't really care. Um, I care that you like it, but I don't care about the thumbs up. Um, Give me some suggestions on videos you want to see. If you want to see me cover, you know, something weird like, um, like groups, I think, or combos, I think are cool, like group combos or um, PVE content, EV. If you want to like you know some how-to guides, I can try to figure it out and do a little video. I just want to help the community if I can. Um, I've got a little bit of knowledge in the game. Um, not as much as I used to. A lot of things have changed. I'm still kind of learning. But uh, I wouldn't mind sharing what I know and sharing my opinions. So if you have any suggestions for things I, I uh, should do, let me know. If you uh, want to see a class I haven't done yet, let me know. I'm going to try to do them all, but I'll probably get burned out at some point. But if I get requests for them, I'll do them. It's no big deal. Um, anything I should change, let me know. Suggestions, tips, things like that. Thanks, guys, for watching. That was the, uh, the Reaver class on Albion. Um, enjoy levying stuff out there. And um, yeah, see you guys later in the next one.